US President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden hosted a social dinner in the East Room for NATO allies and partners at the White House on Wednesday evening. In the background, chorus grows for President to step down from his re-election campaign. Vermont Senator Peter Welch is now the first Senate Democrat to do so. He called on Joe Biden to withdraw for the good of the country for his newspaper op-ed. This came after film star and lifelong Democrat George Clooney added his voice to call for Joe Biden to leave the presidential race in a newspaper column on Wednesday. Just three weeks before publishing the most bruising column, George Clooney's fundraiser hit headlines for bringing in a record single night haul for the president's re-election campaign. He's not the only celebrity to raise concern and doubt about President Biden's re-election campaign. Author Stephen King's comment was rather blunt, as he went on to say for America's interest that Joe Biden should not contest. But the most brutal comment was of director Michael Moore. He attacked the Democrats for committing elder abuse by letting Biden run for 2024 elections. Public opinion too seems to grow against him. He reminds me of my elderly grandparents who are in nursing homes and, need to, and are being taken care of and are resting and are doing what I think our elderly population should be um, concerned with, which is you know, living out the remainder years of their lives with dignity and, and you know, happiness, which I don't think if Biden continues the way that he's going, it's good, that's going to happen for him. He deserves to like chill and like relax. We know that cognitive abilities decline with age. Um, that's not really a surprise. Everybody knows that at some point you got to take your grandparents' keys, like probably around the age Joe Biden is. So, <laughs> yeah. The growing chorus in public has the Senate worried and divided. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's obvious. I mean, I've known him for years. But he's slow down for sure. Can the Democrats replace him at this point? That'd be up to them. I don't know. They're struggling with that idea. What I worry about between now and November, what signals are the bad guys picking up? Uh, you know, we live in very dangerous times. We're worried about an Iranian breakout. Uh, when America seems to be not on its game, people make decisions that, that could uh, be very provocative. So I worry about the national security implications regarding the discussions of his decline ability to perform his job. You can't have a part-time president. you got to be with it morning, noon, and night. Because of her powerful position as the former House Speaker and proximity to Biden, as a trusted longtime ally of his generation, Nancy Pelosi is seen as one of the few Democratic leaders who could have influence on the US President. Former President and Republican candidate Donald Trump is the most happy person at this moment. He reveled in the Democratic infighting that is playing out in public. Meanwhile, the radical left Democrat Party is divided in chaos and having a full-scale breakdown, all because they can't decide which of their candidates is more unfit to be president, sleepy, crooked Joe Biden or laughing Kamala. Laughing Kamala. During his last campaign trail, President Biden tried to rally the key constituency of labor leaders. You know, I said I was going to be the most pro-union president in American history. Well, guess what? I am, and I'm staying there. No, I mean it. Because you represent the folks I grew up with. You represent where I come from. You represent where the vast majority of the American people. All eyes are now set on President Biden's press conference at the end of the NATO summit. It will be the biggest unscripted test for him since his botched debate two weeks prior, which triggered this crisis.